Hi, and welcome to this B1 Usability Package e-learning session. Uh, this one will be about how to automate uh, document text lines and subtotals. So, uh, if you're not familiar with what that, that is, let's quickly jump into Business One and let's see it in action. So, right now I'm on a sales order, uh, and you know that you can put in normal items on a document. But there's also the option to put in text lines, where you write some, some data, and some subtotals. And this video is all about how you can use the macro system to automate these things. Uh, for example, let's say you sell something in a package solution where you always write the top text, you all write, always put in the same items, and, and then you tweak it a bit, but uh, there is a structure in this, so you can actually go in and automate this. So what I have done here is I have made a little button, and let's first see how it works, and then uh, later let's go into how exactly you can do this. So let's uh, automate the text lines by this, so it will begin to do the same work as you might do manually, but it, you can now see I have a full template on how a sales order might look like. And then I go in, give my discount, give different prices if need be, just as you would normally add more lines if special things happen. So how to do this? Let's go in and have a look at this button. The first thing you need to do is to turn on type. If you don't already have it, you just need to go in here and turn on the type because it needs to be on screen before we can automate it. But if you use them already, you might you probably already have it in, in place. So let's have a look at what's going on. And it might seem a bit daunting in the beginning, but it will make total sense once you see it. So the thing is that we use a lot of set commands, some activate commands, and the less known pop form stack in order to do this. And in order for me to show it best is probably to enable debug mode, so we can see this happening one line by line. So let me quickly get rid of the existing lines and press the button and we go into debug mode instead of just running it automatically. So the first thing it wants to do is to, on the last line, set the value of T on column 157. So column 157 is the type column, as we can see in the lower left corner, and we just want to do it on the last line, meaning line number one in this case, and we want to set it to T because T means it's a text line, S means it's a sub uh, subtotal line. So whenever we do that, it will create the text line. And on the fly, like normal business one, it will open up where you write the text line. And this, the macro needs to know. So we, we tell it activate, meaning tell the macro it's now on a new screen. And that's the screen it wants to needs to work with. So that's the only thing of the activate command. And then we tell that this field, which is item 5, as you again can see in the lower left corner, we need to have some kind of text in it. And we just write some, some text. And you can see I use this special keyword new line in order to get uh, multiple lines in this. You can, as always, use SQL colon, uh, dynamic syntax, in order to put, set your, your values in here. But as we do that, it will write in the two lines uh, by the set command, and then it will press the update button. So update button is item one. So we just press that, and the text line pop-up goes away. And here comes a little special thing. In this case, we then need to call what is called pop form stack. And that's because right now the macro thinks it's on that window that just closed. It, it, it don't have the knowledge that the window doesn't exist anymore. So we need to tell it, hey, that window doesn't exist. Make the active uh, window, the sales order, uh, which we are back on right now. And 
that's what pop form stack means. So we tell them to tell it that. You cannot really see any difference, but if you didn't make this, it would begin to say this cannot happen because the uh, the window doesn't have a 38 uh, because because it simply doesn't exist. We then go on to make one more text line, similar like before. Tell the system it's now on a new screen. We put in some some text, and we close it again. Same exact thing. Then we go into normal uh, work on the the, uh, the matrix itself. So we want to set in that we have this special server, which is our stock item we sell. Uh, just put it in on the last line, and we also put in one more line of work. And the work we know for this specific server is always 10 hours, so we put in last minus one. Uh, look up the keyword uh, dot row uh, videos if you don't know this already, but this essentially means that because there's a new line, it needs to happen on line number four now, so that's why it says line last minus one. So you can see the quantity is one here. And by doing this, it ends up being quantity 10, because it takes 10 hours to prepare the server for the customer. Then we are back to the type column. And in this case, we, on the last line, give it an S. An S is for subtotal. So you can see that by, by hovering over the mouse like this, if I put in the subtotal, you can see that in the lower left corner, in the, uh, it is an S, and that's why we did it like that. So we added a subtotal. It will be fully automated. It doesn't open anything, so we don't need to do anything else here. We then do one more text line. Set the value again. Again, this is becoming uh, repetitive now, uh, but it's just to show that this is how it works, uh, and you can do that. And again, remember always to put in the pop form stack. So when you actually close a window, so it's back on uh, the sales order. We then add an item, add one more subtotal, add one more text, and close up saying we are on the last line and the macro is finished. So let's close the macro and we end up with the system. So. You can imagine you can do this for a bunch of extra lines. The more lines you have, the longer it takes, of course. But given the fact that you can go in, do all this as a kind of template for how you sell specific items, you can have multiple buttons for multiple things you sell. Uh, it can save you a lot of time uh, putting this in, and it will also ensure that you do it in the same thing. We always remember to put in this uh, the thank you note, perhaps, and and so on. So this is how it works. Again, seems kind of cryptic, but going to them one by line, it makes uh, hopefully pretty good sense on how you can automate text lines. So with that, thank you for attending this session, and I hope it was beneficial.